watching this on tape. Uh, don't be upset. I, I had this coat 22 years. I didn't know about Peter back then. And uh, shit costs a lot, so I ain't gonna throw it out and bury it or no shit like that. Um, also, it may comfort the Peter people to know that no animals were killed for this coat. No, all these mink were found dead, lying alongside the road. It was more of a gathering than the killing, and some of you may wonder why, why he's still wearing it. I'm cold. <laughs> I know y'all used to this shit. Y'all getting this for real. Y'all used to it. I just came in yesterday, and I, from my house, 82 degrees. <laughs> yesterday, I was sitting with my feet in water at the pool outside. When I stepped off that plane yesterday, <laughs> and that air shot up my ass. <laughs> I screamed like a little girl. <laughs> That's a it's so cold, I saw a dog chase the cat that was walking. <laughs> you said, well, what you got to bring on stage? Well, I really don't know you motherfuckers. And I'm not just leaving my shit. Uh, I don't know y'all nothing like that. Um, I love, before I get started, how I, the artists before me, I'd like to honor and salute them. You are great, great, great artists, all of you. Uh, up and tell you what they like, you know. Uh, Tori says she loves punctuality, you know, and um, told me I was supposed to be coming here at 645. Um, <laughs> car got to me 655. I got here about 710. <laughs> Did the rehearsal was supposed to happen at 7, 736, and we started, show supposed to start at 8, we started right at 816. So, um, <laughs> And I like that she enunciate what she like. You know, she like punctuality. Carol like a big old dick. <laughs> Dame got two wives, so she probably wanted a big old dick. Um, but she loves life. And you, you guys came up here and did the damn thing. She was a big round of applause for all the artists that appeared before me. Stand on the stage that the great Dick Gregory stood up. Dick Gregory was the truth. He was amazing. And when I came, this, this is the first time I've ever done storytelling, so I thank you for allowing me this, Satori. Um, I came with my friend because I was in town doing a comedy show and Dick was here. And he said, Michael, I'm doing storytelling. So I came over to watch and I sat right behind him as he sat there. And then he came on the stage and did that thing. And I was like, oh, I have got to do this. And you made a dream come true by bringing me. I'm, I'm going to take the coat off, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to. Uh, oh, one thing I want to do, because I saw a lot of fellowshipping going on. You know, so we're going to get started in a minute. I know the topic is romance, and I am a romance guy. I'm, I love love. So we're going to get to that. But first, I just want to do fellowship for a second. Can you just turn to the person next to you? Turn to that person next to you and touch, touch the person next to you and say, don't touch me. Don't touch me. You don't know me like that. Lady, if you don't get your hands off me, you better. Just don't touch me like that. Um, I just want to, um, the topic is romance. Um, and uh, and I love your story about your husband, your husband to be. Oh, um, about the diamond. Uh, in case you don't know how to choose that, um, just get the biggest one. As long as that shit is clear, get a big one. I'm hoping things work out perfect. But if you don't, you want a big ass diamond. <laughs> no, uh, me and my woman, we have uh, five million dollars life insurance on each other because. <laughs> there, no, seriously, there's nothing more comforting than if you lose your loved one. There's just nothing more comforting in, in your time of sorrow than some cold cash. Let me tell you that. Uh, if I die, my woman's a shopper. I can tell you that right now. Uh, she's a shopper. Um, my woman could smell a clearance. That's 40% off. 
stopped and just started walking. Um, but we're going to get to that. We're not there yet because I got to tell you, I'm going through something. I didn't get a chance to tell you, Satori. <sighs> My show's going to be thrown off a little bit. I'm going through a little something. I'm going to share it. <sighs> okay. Here it I'm bloated. Okay, now. I'm not, hey, I ain't the only motherfucker in here. Don't make me point. I'm not the only one in here. Bloated. Some of you don't even know it. You just snuck up on your head. All of a sudden, your shit is tight. And you don't know what happened. Some of you sitting here don't know you bloated. Um, let me give you a way of telling if you gain the weight. If you can see the inside of your pants, body, you start to gain weight. If the pleats in your pants deplete, you starting to gain weight. Big dude, you see me talking to you. A uh, elastic in your drawers. Roll over a little bit. Like, you starting to gain weight. Now me, I know my problem. It's, it's food. I want to take a, a, an opportunity to thank a man. Chef, um, what was his name? Chef Rod? Chef, shop, what's Donald's last name? Stutterman? Yeah. Chef Donald Stutterman. He has a restaurant here called 1917. Yeah. If you have an opportunity, go there. The food is a, was it amazing? We ate there this morning. It was a, the food was off the chain. He made an omelet and, and then gave it to me for free. People, free food tastes better than regular food. I don't no, I don't know if it's the ingredients or the preparation. I don't even put no seeds in the free food. I just eat it quick before somebody changes the man. And um, I met him at the Grio, which is amazing. If you haven't been to the Club Rio, you want to go over there. It's amazing. They're rolling vinyl. They're playing albums, man. And the people who ain't hip don't know, but that's the hottest thing right now. Yeah. Albums are coming back. Get you a turntable. Albums and hearing the music in its purest form like that is off the chain. You walk in there, they have the coldest music, nicest people. Our husband bought me a t-shirt. Gave me a t-shirt. Free. Once again, free shit. Um, and then the guy from the restaurant get, bought me another one because I had to get one because Grio, as you know, is a storyteller. And, and all this is full circle because here we are. Here to tell stories in a storytelling forum. And it was just all of it just, it all just came together. So I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Um, I know why well, I'm bloated. Um, no, but then I hate the liars. You know. The liars. Oh, 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 my fat. On oh, Big Bone. Motherfucker. Yo, bone. Ain't no big nobody else, bone. Now you got some big ass meat wrapped around my body. Act like it is what it is. It was the food. It was, I know it is for me, because you folks, y'all got a store, uh, restaurant around the country I keep going to. It's killing me. It's called. Excuse me. Uh, my car will come talk. Uh, you gotta stop that. Thank you. Um, it's called Cracker Barrel. Uh, Anybody ever eat Cracker Barrel? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love Cracker Barrel. Now, at first, I wasn't going to a motherfucking restaurant called Cracker Barrel, okay? Um, I'm from Chicago's Projects, Southside. Rob Keller, I'm 1450 South State Apartment 909. And where I come from, we don't fuck around with no cracker and a barrel full of cracker. That's a whole lot of no cracker. So when they said we want to crack a barrel, I said, I ain't going to crack it. He said, yeah, we are. I said, I ain't going to the cracker barrel because I feel like that. If they call it cracker barrel, it's going to be a bunch of white folk saying negative stuff about the black folk. Mm -mm, mm, it's the opposite. Mm, these folks so nice at cracker barrel. They up to some shit. You hear me? <laughs> Soon as you walk through the door, how you doing? How you doing? Then you listen. If you're gonna go to Cracker Barrel restaurant, walk fast. Okay? Because the only way you can get to the restaurant is if you walk through the Cracker Barrel store. <laughs> Man. The Cracker Barrel store has every type of candy. Known to man. They got sugar baker and sugar daddy. They got moon pies in a goddamn box. Anybody ever had the blueberry pancake to crack down? Woo! The blueberry is so plump and juicy, you bite into them and the juice squeak inside your mouth. And the pancake's so light and fluffy, you got to put syrup on them to keep them motherfuckers from floating to the sea. Now I'm working on it. I don't believe in complaining about things, you're gonna do something about this thing. So I hired myself 
a nutritionist. Yeah, first thing you have is you take all the white out of a diet. No salt, no sugar, no flour, no white people. Then, he got me jumping rope. Anybody jump rope? Like that? Anybody jump? See, when you jump rope, it tightens up your whole body. You jump rope for 10 minutes, it's the equivalency of 30 minutes of jogging. I've had my rope 13 weeks. I ain't fucking touch it, but I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. But here's the thing I'm doing. Look here. This one I'm doing. That's what they do. Listen. This one I'm doing is really heavy. They got me on a thing called a colon cleanser. You might, you might okay, 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 okay. Everybody in this room has a thing inside them called a colon. Okay. This motherfucker, 12 feet long, I'm five foot nine. This one, 12 feet long, runs through your entire body, and everything you've ever eaten in your lifetime has gone through this colon. Now, over the years, some of the food has stuck. It's been sitting in the same place for a year, sir, at your house. You got a sink. Okay, the pipe goes under the sink. Uh, water goes through the pipe. Sediment sticks to the side. Okay, basically, technically, everybody in this room, full of shit right now. Okay, just full of shit. Now, the only way to move the shit along is with a colon cleanser. Now, the one they got me on is called a super cleanser. I don't even call it that. I call it shit quick, okay? Because I'm shit nine, ten times a day. It's just tender. It's just tender. But here's the good news. Here's the good news. I will not be farting while I'm on this stage. I am terrified of the possibility of a fart. If I think of a fart, I'm going to run the hell out of here because I don't know what's really going to happen. In fact, if all of a sudden I take off running, don't take it personal. It just means I got some shit to do. Now, one more thing, and we're going to get started. Um, love, love is often not always linear. You know, sometimes you can't, a lot of people just hope they're going to find that one love in their life. That's going to be it, and uh, life's going to go off bells, everything will be perfect. Uh-uh, sometimes you got to go through some things. I had friends. Well, he wasn't really a man, he was uh, just a head. Yeah, he, ma'am, you got to swallow that and spit that out. You can't keep rolling that ground like that, now that's nasty. Anyway, uh, this guy, it wasn't a really guy, it was just, he was just a head, okay, he was a head. And he was rolling around his house, right? He's bored. He decided to roll down to the park. So he rolled down to the park. When he got to the park, he rolled up to the water fountain. The lady was drinking some water at the water fountain. So the head said to the lady, ma'am, you're beautiful. Will you marry me? He said, marry, marry. You ain't nothing but a head. Gave him a pun. <laughs> the guy was dejected. He rolled back home, rolled to his house, rolled to the kitchen, rolled to the pantry, rolled back and forth on the shelf till he found a bottle marked poison. He took his lips, opened the bottle, Drank the poison, passed out, but he didn't die. Mm. Woke up the next morning, and he had a torso. Yeah, a head and a torso. Ooh, he's feeling good. So he slumped on back at the house, right? He slumped on back down to the park. He slumped up to the, to the water fountain. He slumped up to the woman. She must be thirsty. She still had drinking. Anyway, he slumped up to the woman. He said, Miss, will you marry me now? I got a body. She said, no. You ain't got no arms or legs. Get out of here. We got to help you, Jack. So he slumped back to the house. He slumped to the kitchen, slumped to the pantry, slumped back up on the shelf, got that bottle, tried, tried, tried to kill himself, passed out again, but didn't die. Woke up the next morning, had two arms and a leg. Woo! He was feeling good about himself. So he hopped on back down to the park, right? Hopped up to the woman, hopped up to the five and I was drinking all this damn water. Anyway, hopped up to her. He said, Miss, look at me. I'm almost whole. Will you marry me now? She said, no, I ain't gonna marry no cripple. He said, well, wait right here. So he hopped down, fast as he could. Hopped into the kitchen, hopped to the pantry, grabbed the poison, drank all the poison down, and died. <laughs> yeah, the moral of the story is, Stop or you're a head. Okay, now listen to me. Sometimes, sometimes you can't, you don't get right to the first one, but you don't want to stop. You, you, you want to keep going until you get it right. I am currently with the love of my life. The woman I'm with right now is the woman I've looked for for an eternity. Anywhere I've gone looking for a woman, I was looking for her. But I had to get to her. So I've been married, this, this will be my third time. First time I was married, I was young. I was just got out of high school, young, dumb, full of calm. Didn't know, <laughs> didn't know what I was doing. She didn't either. You know, sometimes we didn't get the right hold. It was just, it was just, it was just yeah, we were straight, we were straight. Uh, we did have an amazing son, Nicholas Sebastian Callia. They came out of that. But then I joined, I joined, I joined the military. You know, because um, I, 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 
I didn't have a life. I said, I'm joining the military. That way I could take care of this woman. I didn't have no money for college. So, join the military. And uh, anybody have met the military and veterans? Yes! Thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. I, but I didn't go to front line. No shit like that. No. Um, no, I punk ass military police. Yeah, yeah. I, I just drove around in a Jeep all day, hoping like hell a fucking domestic squabble didn't bring out. Okay, um, but I went. You know, I went so I get college education. And uh, when I got over there, I found out the woman really wasn't marriage material. You know, you don't find out. She's my high school sweetheart. I didn't know. Her parents said she ain't ready. Listen to the parents. They know what the hell they're talking about. They've been living with her the whole time. I didn't know. I just thought they were trying to keep her from me. Mm -mm. They knew she wasn't shit. Um, <laughs> we got over there. She didn't want to do nothing but lay around all day and watch TV. I go out do my little military policing. I come back, house dirty, ain't no food cooked. I got to cook, clean, and fuck. Why do I need you here? Go on back, go on back. <laughs> After I got out of the military, I learned how to do my craft. I learned how to do comedy, triple threat, sing, dance, act. So I got to do all these things that allowed me to do what my dream is. My dream is, is to be a major, major artist and a major star, not to make money. Uh, let me tell you something, if you're chasing money, you'll never catch it. You see, that, that you have to follow your heart. You know, I mean, a lot of times I'll come on stage and, and I'll pull out a wad of money. And I say, whew, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I sure do love you. Mm, 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 mm. Now put that back in my pocket. Um, how many people thought that was rude, absurd? <laughs> money hurts your ass. Money hurts you because you're scared of money. You ain't be scared of money. Money ain't the root of all evil. Money ain't God. Don't treat it like that. But money is the lubrication of life. Shit, you can't uh, actualize your dreams if your ass can't pay your rent. So it's important. It's important. But you got to do a thing because you love a thing. The topic is romance. Romance, you get there by a road called love. And the love that I have first was is my craft, my art. I want to be the greatest artist I can be because if you follow your heart, then God is your supply. For where does God reside? Except the center of your heart. So the closer you get to your heart, the closer you get to God. And so everything else comes to you. If you do what's in your heart, you don't have to think about money. People will bring you wheelbarrows of money. You won't be able to spend your shit. You won't have no place to put your shit. So you follow your heart. And my heart is the craft. So the craft took me to California, where I wanted to go. You know, I, I became a street performer in Chicago in 1985, telling jokes, passing my hat. And, and, and I get excited because this guy named Eddie Murphy back then was the shit. Um, he was everything. He, he had the, the best uh, uh, comedy show Saturday Night Live. He was a star. He had the biggest movie, Raw, biggest movie film, Raw, doing movies, what the fuck, I have a red leather suit. Anyway, he was getting all that by just telling jokes. So I gave him some Red Fox albums, went to my mama's basement, and, and learned jokes. And Todd's so good at like, man, horses talk to a zebra, rap to a zebra. Try to pick the zebra up. Find a zebra, say, hey, what do you want? The horse says, you know what I want, baby. Now get over here and take off them pajamas. Woo! I'm killing this shit. Get jokes. Just, just learn your jokes. The waiter, every day this waiter would bring the soup to the man's table and he had his thumb in the damn soup. The man got tired and said, hey, fuck you keep putting your thumb in my soup. He said, oh, you mean this thumb? Oh, uh, I, I, I got arthritis. Yeah, I got arthritis in this thumb. And the doctor said, I got to keep that thumb, that thumb warm. <laughs> the doctor said, well, you can stick that thumb up your ass. He said, yeah, that's what I do right before I get the soup. I, anyway, so I found my jokes. I started learning jokes past my hat, and, and I became like one of the best street performers in Chicago, but then winter came. What am I trying to hear no jokes on State Street in December? So I packed everything and went to California. So when I got to California, I, I found Venice Beach. And on Venice Beach, I, I, I made my bones. I spent nine years out there. Five hours a day, every Saturday and Sunday, telling jokes, past my hat, making six figures a year, weekend on. Telling jokes, it was, I, I was hitting my niche. I was doing the thing I wanted to do. And while I was there, I met the second love of my life. Brooks Jackson. Brooks Jackson was a flight attendant. When flight attendants still look like flight attendants. <laughs> Y'all remember that? They almost look like models. They was young, slim, and sexy. Mm -mm, not no more. No, no, now you might get Hilda, Maude, Ryan. You don't know who the hell you are. 
but she was beautiful, sexy, and, and, and we hit we hit off right away. In fact, it lasted a long time. We we were married for 24 years. We've been together for 28. You know, but it, it was a good run. But when a thing is over, a thing is over. It didn't get over immediately. You know, I got in a relationship. Everything was going good for a long time. Everything was working out. Then I started making money. Some of y'all know I wanted a show called Star Search, and, and so that gave me a lot of popularity. I mean, because it gave half to the homeless. It wasn't that I wanted the show, but giving that half to the homeless made everybody come out. So they came out and they saw me on Venice Beach, HBO. So they gave me my own special. So now I'm making money. And I'm, I'm building these, these big houses. I'm with all these stars and stuff. But you know, with money. Sometimes. <laughs> and this time it came in the form of drugs. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Robin Williams said it best. Cocaine is God's way of saying, you're making too much goddamn money, okay? So I mean, <laughs> it started out simple enough. First I started smoking a little weed, you know. Then a little blow. Then a little more. <laughs> Woo! And then I found that pipe and oh, oh, ah! I would get fucked up. That first blast, woo! <laughs> Ooh, it's a motherfucker. Uh, it gave you a euphoric spin. You know, you, you just couldn't wait for the next one. You hit that next one. Woo! <laughs> then, then paranoia kicked in. Shh, shh. Did you see that? You know, I hear people all the time talking about their addiction. Oh, oh, my life was so bad. Now, man. I was getting fucked up. I was partying. I was partying my ass up there. I was getting down. I was a hardcore motherfucking addict too. I was one of them crackheads that couldn't understand. How the fuck we gonna stop getting high? And it's still dope on this plate. Give me that razor blade. I take that razor blade, I cut it up real good, you know. Smush it, got smush it around right now. Put it in the pipe. Then you gotta clean it. That's that residue. Yeah. Ooh, I fucking kill for residue. Uh, I can make a crack pipe out of anything. Pizza glass. Uh, Coke, Coke can, Tampax, um, car antenna. Yeah, if you, you came out in the 90s and your car antenna was gone, motherfucker, that was me, you know. Oh, man, I, I smoke so much goddamn crap. One day, I broke into my own damn house. I was half at the door with the TV. Before I realized it was my damn place. Now, before I broke in, I used to stand outside. <laughs> and case the joint. Well, I still wanted what 
I wanted. I had a son, and I was determined that I'm going to have a daughter. So I went out looking for a woman that's going to be fly, hot, wild like me, and would be willing to give me a daughter. And I, and I found a woman, Denise, and she was awesome. And, and she wanted to do it. She was doing the same things I was doing. And she was willing to give me this child, and she got pregnant. But it was, it was wrong. I, sh I shouldn't have went about it that way. No, sir. Sir. I shouldn't have been fucking that woman. <laughs> what I should have done. No, what I should have done is um, taking my wife to a therapist, you know, uh, one of them uh, uh, marriage conflicts, told him the situation, so he could have said to her, you need to give him that goddamn baby, like he asked for the first place, and it would be no problem. That, that's what happened. What happened was she got pregnant, and um, I only had one, one rule, please, whatever we do, we're not going to hurt Brooks. I'm going to go to her myself and tell her. You know, that, that I'm leaving, that I'm coming to you with my baby. But before I could do it, my girlfriend, and, and let me tell you something, girlfriends, pregnant girlfriends, just fuck up. Happy marriages. Anyway, uh, I, my girlfriend, oh, I'd like to say I saw that on a t-shirt. That t-shirt belongs to a friend of mine named Corey Holcomb. So when this airs nationally, I don't know nobody say, Michael stole Corey Holcomb's joke. The shit just fit right there, so I'm borrowing it. Okay, anyway, uh, and I'm gonna call him tonight and tell him before you motherfuckers do. Uh, so anyway, so, so she got pregnant and I, I, I was gonna tell Brooks myself, I wanted to break it to her gently. But before I get home, my girlfriend, and what I found is an act of betrayal, called first, <laughs> left a message on the phone. Uh, Brooks, this is Dan East. Uh, I'm pregnant with Michael's baby. Click! Okay, well, uh, I guess I had to tell her now. Okay, so I get to the house, and I told her, and she passed out. I ain't never seen nobody pass out. I saw people drop dead, but I ain't never seen nobody pass out. You know, so, anyway. When, um, when she woke up and realized what the situation was, she said she'd forgive me if I never saw that woman again and never saw the child. And I had to go for it because I felt guilty and I felt wrong. And I said yes to that, you know? And um, so we continued on trying to have a life, you know? Um, but what I had broken could never be fixed, you know? So, um, but we still tried. We put on a good face. I always carried her in the highest possible form. And that's what I think men are supposed to do. You always hold your woman up to the highest form. Um, but still secretly, she, I was hanging out with the women, getting <laughs> fucked up. I, I come in, be three thirty in the morning, shit. I was going down that track. I'm sneaking in, I'm trying to wake her up. <laughs> Heart pumping fast, sweat like R. Kelly in the playground. <laughs> I get, I get tired of the sneaking in, tired of the lying, tired, tired of breaking her heart, sick and tired of being sick and tired. So I went and called Cocaine Nines. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm fucked up! And they said, uh, don't worry about it. Come on down, we got a meeting on Saturday. So I came to the meetings and I got into Cocaine Nines, so I started getting well. So I, and, and I did good too for about eight months. And then I started missing crack. Anybody ever miss crack? Anybody? Oh, I'm gonna fuck you in the room, Mr. <laughs> I don't think anybody tell the truth. But when you miss crack, you know, you miss crack like that bad girlfriend. Sir, you know what I'm talking about. We want to fuck real good, but the bitch crazy. So, when y'all get through, you want to get out of the house. Get out of the house, take your shit, don't call me. Don't come back here, don't no Before I know it, I'm out there getting high again. Get fucked up. But then I realized um, that I would turn my life around because I have a mother. And you can't even talk about love if you can't talk about your mom. The mother is the essence of all of it. I, I, when I was a child, I looked up to my mother. What I saw y'all do today is what mothers do. You brought these children out here and let them dance. And we honored them with praise. Now, I'm really proud of y'all because you do white folks do this shit. I love that. White folks do that. We black folks, we sometimes shut our kids down. Yeah. We see our kids jumping around, dancing. Shirley, you better sit yourself down somewhere. White folks, look at Shirley. She's going to be a ballerina. 
<laughs> Black kid be tapping on shit, beating on drums and shit. You hit that drum again. Uh, uh, Bobby, I'm gonna hit you. White folks, look at Bobby. He's gonna be a drummer. Yeah. And then they start with their kids really young. If they four or five, they see it, something wanna do, they bow. Some drums. Now they put their ass out in the garage with it, but they bow. Some drums. They encourage by the time they're 11, they know the drums. By the time they're 16, they got a record deal and they're buying them a home. That's what we did in here today when you honored those young kids. All that is the essence of what our mothers are. In fact, I can't really talk to you about, while we're talking about that, say something about my mom. But well, I can't really say nothing about my mom until I say something about your mom. So let me just start with your mom. Your mama is the greatest family member you'll ever experience. Oh, your father's cool, your brothers and sisters are right, but your mama is the shit. Let me tell you something, your mama believed in you before you believed in your damn self. And for many of us, mama is the first God any of us ever knew. Oh, you got these people calling themselves your ride or die friend shit. Get in trouble. See if you can try anymore. Your mama is gonna stick with you through thick or thin. You kill a motherfucker. I'm not talking about no accident. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about it on purpose. Yeah, cut a motherfucker up in a million pieces. Make a lampshade out their backbone. Your mom will be the one in court with your crazy ass. She hold the Bible. Oh, my baby didn't do that. You don't know my baby. That was not my mic, baby. My mother is my first hero and my greatest hero. My mom came to these shows when y'all wouldn't come. Wouldn't be with six people in the room, my mother would be here. She sit over there and laugh while I'll get up over there, sit down and laugh. Get up over there, sit down and laugh, get up over there, sit down and laugh, make this shit feel like a crowd. And although she was my best friend and my first hero, most importantly, she was my mother. And she took that very seriously. My mom didn't take no shit. She was five foot nothing with a heart of gold and a fist of fury. She wished a motherfucker would. my mother. I wasn't afraid of her. But you know how we say we have a fear of the Lord? That don't mean we scared of God. That means we hold God in high reverence. I held my mother in high reverence. Because I know she was a motherfucker. <laughs> my mama can't no shit. She raised five men and she didn't play. My mama invented the backhand lick. Anybody ever had backhand lick? Anybody don't know backhand lick? Okay. Backhand lick is when your mama drives the car. And she done told you to knock it off. And you keep on doing it. She slapped the fuck out you. She gets you with all four knuckles and don't even throw the car off. Ha! Say it again. Say it again. My mama invented that. My mother would rather die than let one of her kids disrespect her. I see kids that they talk back. They talk back to their parents. I heard of when I grew up. White kids talk back. They get time out. Black kids talk back, they get knocked the fuck out. You hear me? I remember one day my brother, six foot two, Dave Kite, decided he would talk back to my mom. But he'll be slick about y'all. He gonna do it under his breath. Mothers in the room, let me ask you a question. Do you have a second sense? Well, you can hear what your children are saying Two and three rooms of it. Yeah. Damn it, I thought so. <laughs> my mom was way down in the living room. She's watching television. She's watching World Wrestling Federation. <laughs> my brother was in the pants. He had a big old mirror. He was getting dressed. He's always splendiferous. <laughs> I don't even know what it is my mama told him to do. But he decided he won't say some mumbly, disrespectful, under his breath shit like, hmm. You got a lot of nerve to talk to me like that. She better shut the fuck up. <laughs> shit. Woo! She better be lucky I love her if I choke the shit out of her. <laughs> and my mother heard it. My mama come run from the living room. Do that. Do the kids. Do the pants. Wrap the arm around the neck. Do both her feet in the air. Washing the motherfucking dishes, you hear me? No, it wasn't my day. I washed the shit out of them, them dishes with the biggest man. You got that mark? But my mother, my mother loved us. My house was full of love. 
And so I come up loving and respecting women. I might say bitch once or twice in my comedy act, but it's not part of my show. You don't hear me saying that. You don't hear me in a conversation with nobody ever saying that. My mother wouldn't have that. I love you and respect you too much. <sighs> Men always complain. My, my woman don't treat me like a king. I am. That's because you forget to treat your women like the queens they are. I'm in love with a great woman. A great queen. Her name is Kelly. Kelly McCann right now. But we engaged. Big ass ring. Too. Um, I can't not marry her. Else I'm gonna have to kill her, cause I'm gonna need that ring back. Um, <laughs> we're almost there, people. Not at Kelly yet, but almost. The young lady had a beautiful daughter for me. The daughter turned seven. And I had to go back to Brooks because I had promised I would never see this woman or see that child. So I had to go to my church, Agape, uh, in Los Angeles, Reverend Michael Beckwith. And I heard you say something about religion and spirit. I'm not religious either, I'm spiritual. For me, the difference is religious people seem to think there's a hell. Spiritual people have already been there several times. <laughs> um, so I went to Michael Beckwith and I said, brother, I made a promise and I have this child and I promised I would never see the baby again. And he said, brother, that's not a promise you can make. You need to go home and tell your wife that you have a child and you're going to honor that baby and raise that child and be a father. And that's what I did. And when I did that, guess what? She understood. She, wasn't, she didn't do that because she's a bad person. That was a knee-jerk reaction from her being hurt, from my betrayal of her. And so I had a chance to raise my child and we still, my wife and I had more of a friendship than a relationship. The relationship really wasn't there anymore. Remember people, everything is about communications and relationships. How you communicate with people and how you relate with them will determine how you get along and how it gels. So we were friends, but the relationship was gone. We weren't really there like that. And this is when I met my queen, my true queen, the one I've looked for for an eternity. Her name is Kelly. In fact, I met her at church. And I wasn't even looking for nobody. I thought they'd done my shit. Us from passing out flyers. <laughs> No, I'm I, I tell some jokes, but I sell shit way better than I tell jokes. I'm, well, I sell some shit. I don't know what kind of show I had, but I had a stack full of flies. I'm passing them out, and I saw her. Her eyes are green. She has dreadlocks to her waist. And she, she reminds me a lot of my mother. She's my mother's same height. She has a high cheekbone. My mother had high cheekbones. And, 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 and she wasn't light skinned, she's light brown. And she had good hair. You know, black folks think when they got high cheekbones and good hair, they got some Indian in them. <laughs> a lot of black people got high cheekbones and good hair. Don't have any of them. Now, that don't mean the Indian didn't sneak in and fuck one of my grandparents. I'm just saying to our knowledge that wasn't about that. Um, but she reminded me of my mother and her look, but she's different from me. She's different as night and day. First of all, she's a vegetarian. And I'm not. No, hell no. I, we, people, we got to eat these animals. We got to eat these animals, people. I love chicken. Most black people, if they're not vegetarians, they love chicken. Now, see, a thing and a stereotype, if it's true, we love chicken. Right, but let me tell you, they have a thing called mad cow disease. Black people ain't say shit. They have a thing called swine flu. We ain't said motherfucking thing. Let them fuck with them chickens. It's gonna be an uprising and a revolution. People, when I eat a chicken, I am doing the Lord's work. Let me explain myself. God created everything with purpose. What's the purpose of a chicken if it's not to eat the chicken? Chicken ain't gonna do shit for you. Chicken can't bring in new paper. Chicken can't protect your house. You can't even make a fucking chicken coat. You can't do shit with a chicken, but eat the chicken. When I eat a chicken, the Lord smiles. But my woman, she ain't having any of that. Kelly will not eat anything that ever had a heart or a face. She rationalizes that she doesn't want something to scream out in terror just so she can have a sandwich. And I get that. 
I get that, you know, because I had an experience at a Wolfgang Puck restaurant. Have you ever eaten? Anybody ever eaten Wolfgang Puck restaurant? I went to Wolfgang Puck restaurant, nice one too. Chinois. And you could sit right at the counter and watch them make the food. On this particular day, the chef had a high flame and he, he set the skillet on a flame, thin skillet, and, and, and he filled it with olive oil. Very healthy. Uh, olive oil. <laughs> then he took a live crab and sat it in that hot oil. And it, it screamed out and died and died. I thought, oh, I thought this was cruel as shit. I never seen it in my life. But when I dipped it in that sauce, <laughs> Thing that's crawling in the house. If I find a bug, I gotta put it in the cup, take it out back, and release it. <laughs> first day I met her, we was walking. I, I mean, well, we not first day, we was about a month after we really got together. Because I tell you, when I first met her, I was still married. And I, and I told her, I'm getting out of it. And when I met her, when I met her um, at church, we just talked, and I just like, my God, I'm thunderstruck. This bad motherfucker. I've always loved to know somebody, meet somebody like her, all natural, beautiful, everything. And I just gave her one of my cards. I didn't expect to hear from her. You know, about four days later, I heard from her. But I didn't know who the fuck she was. Um, I talked to a lot of people. I passed out a lot of flyers and cards. You know, I'm trying to get a job. And um, so when she called me, she tried to describe herself. And I, oh, wow, dreadlocks. Okay. Are you in Facebook? Yes, I go to Facebook. Let me just say something about Facebook. Everybody can't be my Facebook friend. Okay, let me just say, first of all, you can't be my Facebook friend if your picture ain't on Facebook. It's called Facebook, motherfucker. So, you ain't on Facebook. Don't put this here. You can't be somebody else. You can't, your name can't be Robert Jenkins and you put Eddie Murphy's picture, okay? I don't want to see a picture of your pet. And if you some fella that's all buff and shit with your shirt off and oiled up, no, nigga. You ain't my friend. No. Everybody can't be my friend. No. So I said, are you on Facebook? She said, yeah, I went to Facebook and saw her. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God, this is a woman I've been looking for forever. <laughs> no, forever. No, I kid you not, forever. She, she is so kind. She loves me so deeply that it humbles me and it excites me. I don't need a motherfucking alarm clock to get up in the morning. I pop up in the morning ready to go. I'm walking 35% faster. She has given my heart something extra to thrive about. She a bad motherfucker. If I wasn't me, I would have been her. <laughs> now, I say that everywhere I go. Because she expects, but that's not what's important. What's important is, she is to me what I believe a woman is supposed to be first and foremost to her man. She's my friend. So whether I get it right or fuck it up, she will always be by my side and with me and in me and as me and so I can walk on water and fly to the sky because she's already here. Yeah, right. When I first met her, about, I told her you know, that I'm, I'm, I'm still I'm married, but I'm trying to get out of it. Then we start seeing each other. And, you know, people always tell you that shit. Oh, man, I'm married, but we work, we're working on it. You know, uh, but it was the truth. I was, I was there, but just the shell of me, my spirit, my heart, my soul wasn't there. And, and I see that it could be with her, and I was telling her. So we started seeing each other. And the first time we made love, she cried like a baby, like she had, like she had lost somebody. At first I thought it was that big old dick, but no. Um, she cried. She, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's a little more, that's a little more sensitive. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, but she said, and let me. Okay, anyway, um, this shit is good. Someone is coming off the top. Okay, anyway, um, you no, know, she sat in this bed and cried as though a relative had died. I mean, she cried violently. And I said, why are you crying, baby? And she said, how can we do this? We love God. We love our church of God, baby. We love Michael Beckwith. We're supposed to be trying to do the right thing. How can we do this? And I'm like, well, because we love each other. But I'm in a situation that I gotta get out of. I've been with this woman 28 years, married for 24. I'm not just gonna kick her to the motherfucking curb. You're on your own. I've done everything for her. I've raised all the money. I gotta make sure she's okay. That might take me about two years. And she's like, well, I'll try to wait, but I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> about six weeks later, I was like, you know what? I don't, 
I don't think it's gonna take no two years. <laughs> About a week after that, I was like, shit, this ain't gonna last till June, okay? I'm about to... <sighs> and when you're in a relationship and you want to talk about romance, it's a job, man. Relationships is a job. And the job is to love each other up and lift each other up all the time. It's not part time, it's not every night, all the fucking time. I give my woman cards, shit, almost every week I give her cards. If I ain't got no other card, I give what the fuck they got. They got an Easter card, and if they just somebody will fuck, I get an Easter card. <laughs> and she'll love it every time. She'll never get tired of that. Young men and older gentlemen here, buy your woman flowers, man. Every grocery store sells flowers for $10 for a bushel of roses, 12 roses. You don't got to tell them it's $10. Shit, take the fucking price tag off, take the paper off and come home and give them the flowers. Now, if you cut an inch off them flowers every day and put them in fresh water, that $10 investment will last five days. You know how your woman gonna feel if she get up every day and she walks in the kitchen and see them roses opening up and becoming more beautiful? Oh, you gonna get some special shit. <laughs> and let me tell you this, if your woman ain't worth 10 goddamn dollars, you need to change women. <laughs> you got the wrong motherfucker. $10. It's easy. I always do fly stuff for her. I went out. Ooh, you're going to love this. I went and got a chef to come and cook for us a lunch. Okay? To do a vegetarian lunch for my queen. And, and I said, first of all, don't come with me today in free clothes. Okay? You need to wear your cooking smock, your hat. You know, you got an assistant. Bring your assistant. Don't bring that shit here cooked. It's a kitchen. You come over here from Sheffield, okay? So we laid the table out and everything. She printed a beautiful menu with the meals on it, you know. And then she even put on the back the ingredient of everything because she know my woman's a vegan and my woman's real. Oh gosh, she's real touchy. I'm, I'm scared. In, in, in restaurants, I'm terrified. The shit she be saying, the way that I know they gonna fuck us up. They are. I mean, she just every damn question. Is there cream in the cream? Yeah, the bitch is cream in the cream. They be mad. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Like and I keep telling him, please, don't play with people who have to bring you your food. Y'all need the word dick several times. So I'm not going to say, I put my dick in most salad. Oh, I'll give a whole new meaning to cream. Let me tell you something. Don't play with your weight. She played with the weight. Don't do that shit. I can't eat now. I'm not eating now. No, I'm just gonna have my beverage. But she, because she, so they came and they made this menu, and the menu was perfect, and it listed everything. And she took it and was so blown away. She framed it. It's on the wall. This cost 135 dollars. They know a lot of money. I'm always the way. Ooh, gotta tell you what I did for the fifth anniversary. I went down to the tattoo store and got the words "I love you" tattooed. To the old ding a uh -huh, uh -huh. I get to the house, I whip it out, I say, happy anniversary. She read it, she said, ain't that a damn shit. First you want to tell me how to dress. Then you want to tell me how to cook. Now you want to try to put words in my mouth. Okay, people. People. I'm playing. But in a relationship, in a relationship, you better play. That was one of the keys that you mentioned today which let me know you're gonna be so successful. Your man get up and sing that horse is a horse, of course, of course. You play, you dance, you, you do things for each other. You remember the child within you, man. And, and you share and you love each other up for no other reason. There don't have to be no birthday, none of that shit. Just cause you woke up and I saw you, when I wake up and see my queen, I'm in heaven. If she smiles at me, I'm done. Stick a fork in me, I'm done. That's why the first thing I do when I get up in the morning is I say my prayers. Well. I brush my teeth first because I don't like to talk to God with a dirty mouth. But then, then I pray, but my prayers are always prayers of gratitude. I'm not begging, oh God, give me that, give me that. I'm not begging God for anything. God wants me to have what I want to have. That's why you have to be careful what you ask for. Because the universe is going to give it to me. So I don't get up begging for this and that. I get up saying, thank you, God. You know what? God woke me up this morning. He didn't have to do that for me. That was pretty damn nice. And I'm awfully grateful for that. But then I, I thank him for my queen, man, because it's about balance. In the Hebrew faith, they have a book called Talmud. Talmud said that, that God created all 
souls is perfect halves. And, and when you find your half, it's called a brasherta. If it's a man, it's a brashert. Once you find your halves, you become whole. And your heart sings a royal song, and you never have to look again. And people say, well, well that too. How, how come so many divorces? But you didn't find your brasherta. You <laughs> just settled for some shit that was close. I, I have found my brasherta. I have found the woman who makes my heart sing a royal song. So I don't have to go looking nowhere. I ain't interested no more. Everything I want is where I reside. All she has to do is look at me, and I'm done. I call her and hear her, her voice. I'm through. I'm through. I'm thinking of some shit right now that I can do for her right this minute while I'm talking to you. I be shopping for all the time. She be tired of me. Where am I put it? Let me tell you something. I bought a fucking bear, a teddy bear this big. She made me sit in the garage. Where am I going to put it? Because I'm bringing shit home every day. And what is she doing? The same thing, loving me back, loving me up, lifting me up, remembering this God first, having fun with life, kicking the world. You know, you're supposed to live this life. Yeah. You're really supposed to eat what you want to eat. Fuck what you want to. Get in the water. If you don't swim, get in the walk out there. Live this life, man. <laughs> and when you can find your perfect mate, Satori, which I think you've done, Karen, dang, did you do it? You did it twice. Okay. Um, <laughs> She said two wives, shit, I don't know. I'm just working with what I get here. Um, when you find the one, then life becomes a royal dance. Don't live your life being sorrowful. Don't be regretful. God created us to have a great time, to live this life. Anybody tell you that you got to suffer for God? They a motherfucking lie. They lying. God ain't never said that. There's no Bible that says that. Show me that shit. God didn't say that. We don't have to suffer. Everything we have is on this planet. Once we learn to start loving each other and giving to each other, there'll be so much for everybody that we'll have to store things away. Yeah. It's about love, and love is God. The word is interchangeable, and if you want it, you have to be it. A lot of people want to be your friend, but they want a friend, but they don't know how to be one. Well, I don't know if I have no friend, because motherfucker, you don't know how to be one. You have to be kind to get kind. You have to be love to get love. And when you find the right one, Satori, Karen, dang, when you find that, the right one, nurture them. Love them, hold them, squeeze them all the time. Be thinking tonight, what can I do for them tomorrow? This going to blow their mind. It's going to surprise them. Write a love note with, with soap on, on the mirror. I'm going to lick the shit out of you tonight. <laughs> you ain't even got to do it. Put it on the mirror anyway. See some shit come out. So... In closing, um, in closing, I have to say this. Um, I just want to say my mother transcended. Now, I don't say died. Because as long as you hold people in your heart, they're alive and well. I talk to my mother every day. Because if I hear her talk back, I will be getting professional help. But I'm just saying. She forms my every decision. She informs my every decision. So I don't do no bad shit on purpose. If I fuck you up, I swear to God, it was a mistake. I don't do that on purpose. Because my mother and God is watching me, and all I want is for my mother and God to be proud of me. That's the kind of life I want to live. My queen helps me be that. She reminds me when I get off step, when I say the wrong thing, when I sometimes go too far. We're all human. So what we're supposed to do is nurture each other, hold them to each other, steer each other. When one of us say something out of land, pull that other one back and save them. But walk through this world with kindness. Walk through this world knowing that you're my brother. If I see my brother in everyone, then I have no one to fight. I don't see a white man as my opposite. I see you as my brother. And if you're my brother, what the fuck are we going to fight about? If you're my brother. You know, society will play with you. They'll make you think everything black is bad. Oh, oh yeah, uh, uh, you, you go to the funeral, you wear black. Oh, you go to the wedding, you can wear white. Oh, the cowboy bad guy, right, the black horse with black hat. Uh, oh, good, good cowboy, he get all white, but then, when they want your motherfucking money, it's Black Friday. So, don't get, don't get caught up. Don't get caught up in the shit. Lead, lead with your heart. Remember that love is not linear. There may be bumps and things in the way that throws you off, but stay on your path. Stay on the path of love. Keep God first. I, I apologize to anyone who's offended by my words, 
but God created all of them. <laughs> Every one of them. And he knows my heart. God knows what I'm talking about. And let me tell you, we agree that motherfucker is motherfucker. In the beginning, we didn't have words. A rock was a river. I got a river. We all agree, I got a river. Then somebody say shit, why don't we call it a chair? And so we agree to these words. But to label them good or bad, you ain't gonna find no word and no religious doctrine which breaks down what's the bad words and good words. That's people trying to control you. If I have been able to deliver my message, it does not matter what the words are. Either you got it or you didn't. And if you did, you had a good time, you learned something and you had fun. And if you didn't, God bless you anyway, because I'm gonna keep on saying this shit because they paid me too much money to stop. So, so I want to say thank you. My, my queen is so awesome. I want to say thank you. Um, to Satori Shakur, to my friends who shared the stage with me, to great people like like Dick Gregory, a great, great man, to this institution that's here so we can come together and tell stories. If she said y'all want to tell stories, come up and tell a story. Shit, don't know, none of us know what we're doing. I ain't never did this before. Can't, can't release your first time. No story tell. We got fucking clue. It don't matter. Just stand here and tell your truth. Because if you tell your truth, 86% of the people in the audience have experienced the same things that you have. Yeah. And they will resonate to you. They will feel it. They will get it. And they're going to be all right. And if they're not all right, that's all right too. Because everything's in divine order. God is running all of it. You see, there is no if or and. Either he is or he ain't. Even God is everything or he ain't shit. There ain't no middle of the road. And for me, God is everything. And as long as I keep God first, I can do everything. And my sobriety... Man, I'm doing everything right now. On, right now, I'm doing a one-man show that I'm killing them called Michael Kaya's Mama. We did 10 in Hollywood. Then they brought me down to the, uh, the National Black Theater Festival. But I had 48 plays. Mine was voted number one. So February 23rd, we're shooting it in Hollywood for Netflix. Then we're doing a 100-city tour. Yes. I'm, I mean, I'm talking about people. I did crack for 23 years. As of March 1st, I have seven years of pure sobriety. And if I can do it... Anybody can do it. Well, all you have to do is keep God first. Stay close to your heart. And if you want romance, it wants you. Everything you're seeking is seeking you. Just get out of your own way and let it come. My name is Michael Cowley, and I hope you enjoyed yourself. Thank y'all. You can follow me on Twitter.